So on the 24th of August 2018, which is a year ago, almost to the day, uh, Forever Green Energy completed the install of my 9 kilowatt solar array. In this video, we're going to talk about how the system has performed over the last year, kind of what I'm happy about, I'm not so happy about, and just general feelings. A few of you have asked uh, in the comments of the original video about what was um, the Forever Green referral when I kind of asked you to mention um, that you'd kind of go in with them due to the videos. That referral scheme was um, basically what I got with my invoice is if you referred a friend, um, you could earn £250 referral fee. At the time of doing this video, a year on, I know many of you have gone with Forever Green for your install. Uh, and just to be clear, I've never actually received any money from them um, despite following up uh, to find out if they're still doing the referral scheme because I know several of you have decided to go with Forever Green as a result of these videos, but never mind. Um, so let's talk about how the system has performed in the last year. Right, so as a reminder as to what it is that we have set up. So we have um, 30 Pimar uh, solar panels on the roof, totaling nine kilowatts. Um, each of those has a solar edge optimizer on the back of those panels, which connects into a solar edge uh, HD Wave 6000, so a six uh, kilowatt inverter. So that's kind of what my system it's kind of limited to. Um, so that's kind of what we're talking about. Uh, at the same time, I also had a My Energy Eddy uh, and Harvey installed. This is to enable me to use the surplus energy to uh, heat my hot water. And then a few months later, I then also had uh, Tesla Powell 2 installed. And I do a kind of year follow on video for that in around October when that um, will have reached its one year anniversary. And since then, in February this year, I moved to having an electric vehicle as my kind of main primary car. And then I also had my energy Zappi installed. So this is really just focusing on the, the solar, so the solar panels, the solar inverter, and the Eddy. That's kind of what this is kind of all about. So prior to getting solar, and I look at kind of back at old bills and old utilization. So what it was I was trying to achieve is I was using around 7,527 kilowatt hours of electricity annually. Uh, and in terms of gas, I was using 11,718 kilowatt hours of gas annually. And just kind of for a bit of extra clarity, it kind of makes sense a bit later on. Uh, my petrol usage, I don't do loads of miles, um, but I was averaging around 2,000 to 2,200 a year in petrol costs. Now, the idea for me of the solar installation was I wanted to get as close as possible to looking at a whole year and being able to be kind of self-sufficient. Now, of course, in the summer, you have uh, an abundance of Kind of solar energy uh, and in the winter you do not so obviously i'm going to be generating more than i can use um during the summer months and obviously then having a deficit and starting to pull from the grid uh, in the winter but basically overall i was trying to achieve a solar system that could generate um 7527 kilowatt hours annually so that was my aim and that doesn't include obviously having an electric vehicle or anything like that i appreciate that when i moved to electric vehicle I would use more electricity. So, what was the, the situation? So, we've gone with this system. So, nine kilowatt array, limited by the six kilowatt inverter, and we've got the um, eddy to have to do um, surplus solar. So, what Forever Green said to me based on the system um, that they uh, agreed to install for me is that the system should be able to generate around 8.35 kilowatt uh, no megawatt hours per year so that should be fine because that is 
uh, and of over kind of the um, 7,000 uh, and a half kilowatt hours or whatever it was um, that I was trying to achieve. So that everything seems really good right now. Um, a reasonable amount of clipping in the summer months. You can see June um, in the estimate would be the, the most uh, generating month. I also do uh, monthly videos if you haven't seen them already on the channel and you'll see that for this year, June was actually the worst month. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see how things worked out. I then also did my own uh, estimation. So remember, for Evergreen estimated 8.435 megawatt hours. And my estimation was that um, the system would generate 7.97 megawatt hours, so slightly less. Um, and I kind of generally see in my month to month solar stats that the, the actual generation is tends to be slightly above uh, my estimation and slightly below theirs. So even with my kind of conservative estimate, 7.97 megawatt hours would be more than my previous year's usage. So that's what we're trying to aim for. So what um, was the result? So I was away when we hit the kind of uh, one year anniversary to um, the, the, the time. So my system went live at 3.30 p.m. on the 24th of August, 2018. So I logged on at 3.31 p.m. So only one minute late and took a quick snapshot of what I could see on the app. And the lifetime generation at the time then was 8.12 megawatt hours. So it um, basically was really good. Uh, that's the first thing, really good. Um, so I generated more uh, free electricity than I had pulled from the grid in the previous years when I didn't have solar. So the system is doing exactly what it um, should be doing. So again, slightly above what my estimate was um, but slightly below what Forever Green Energy's uh, estimate was. But again, June was a bad year, so I think that could kind of equate to why the system performed a little bit less than perhaps they expected. So what does that mean? Um, so in terms of kind of some more statistics, as mentioned, so in one year, my system has generated 8.12 megawatt hours uh, of electricity. I've been able to consume, or I have consumed, including I'll see that solar generation and electricity from the grid, uh, 10.9 megawatt, uh, uh, um, yeah, megawatt hours in a year. That's kind of estimated because I couldn't check it at the exact time uh, of everything um, and looking at my current bills, etc. But that's kind of what it seems to be. Now, the reason my electricity usage is higher than it was um, before having solar is because uh, I now have electric vehicle since February. So I'll see my um, electric usage there has increased. But in combination um, with that though, I have now had a reduction in my gas usage. So as mentioning um, previously, my gas usage um, was 11,718 kilowatt hours. But now, since I've been able you know, to heat a lot of it for many months with the surplus, I only use 796 kilowatt hours um, from the gas supplier. So that's obviously a saving there as well. And just kind of out of information sharing, as I mentioned earlier, since moving um, to electric, electric vehicles, I'm not using petrol anymore. Um, so this year, or in the, year, in the year since having solar installed, I've only spent 750 pounds uh, on petrol as well. So that's kind of how things has kind of shaped up in this year of having solar. So what does that kind of mean in terms of the results? So what that means is over the year, this is what we're trying to work out in terms of how things look in terms of payback. So over the, over the year, I've um, saved around 968 pounds on electricity because that's how much it would have cost me to buy the electricity I generated from the grid. I've earned £550 from the feed-in tariff based on my generation and assumed export. I've saved around £360 in not having to use gas to heat my hot water like I had done in previous years. So that's been some saving as well. And then also 
Um, some of the money I've saved uh, in terms of not having to pay for petrol now, I have an electric vehicle, and obviously I'm charging that from the solar or on the economy tariffs, um, a saving of one thousand four hundred and fifty pounds. So. What does it really mean though, in terms of payback? So my kind of estimate, I think I remember saying in one of the earlier videos that my estimate was around 13 years is what I thought would be the payback for my solar system. But I needed to wait a year to see kind of how things have performed. So I still think this first year hasn't been the best performance I'm gonna see because of that kind of dodgy June. But based on this one year that we have had, if this was the same time and time again, and we didn't consider any of the gas savings or petrol savings or increasing in energy tariffs or anything like that. Um, it would take 11 years and one and a half months to pay back um, my solar system. So I actually think that's really good. So a couple of years less um, than what I thought it was gonna be, about 13 years. But again, that number doesn't um, factor in um, any gas and petrol savings. Now, if we were, Super rose tinted mode, which I think is not the right um, perspective to have. But if I considered the gas and the petrol savings and all this kind of stuff, the system would pay itself back in four years, which is a ridiculous number. So I, I remove uh, petrol costs from the equation. That really kind of helps to um, quantify why an electric vehicle is better over an uh, internal combustion engine vehicle. So what we should do though, is we should look at the electricity costs and the gas costs, because that is really all true to the solar system. And in that case, it's gonna take me nine years um, to pay back the system. So I actually think that's pretty good. So in nine years time, um, my system will be fully paid back. Uh, again, assuming no changes in electricity tariffs or anything else that will um, increase the rate uh, of payback. Uh, and then everything after that is going to be free, free, free generation. And I'm sure you're saying, oh yes, but your system will be nine years old by then. And you're right. Um, but the, the panels that I have, um, I think they, rec they say that they will still generate 80% of their efficiency after 30 years or something, 25 years or 30 years, can't remember, something like that. That's one of the things I really liked about them. Um, all of the, um, uh, what's it called? The optimizers, I think they are guaranteed for 20 or 25 years. So again, still 10 or 15 years after that before we have to worry about any of that kind of thing. And I'm soon going to be upgrading my inverter warranty to 25 years. So again, I'll have 15 years after the system has paid itself back with, with no worry that these things will just get replaced if they need to. So in terms of things, going in the future. So I think the future is bright as long as the sun continues to shine or at least that solar rays can get through the clouds and um, do their thing. Every year, uh, I can't see that gas and electricity prices are gonna come down. They're gonna continue to rise. Uh, the feed-in tariff, even though it's very small for me, um, will continue to rise slightly with inflation. So that is gonna accelerate that nine year payback and reduce it um, over time, which is really good. Um, also plan to move my wife to an electric vehicle in the next six to 12 months as well. So that will obviously help uh, in terms of uh, our reduction in petrol costs and stuff, which we're not concluding in this, but again, it is gonna help because the solar can charge her car as well. Um, I have been considering looking at an air source heat pump, um, but I think because my gas usage is really quite low over the year, I think it's gonna take far too long um, to pay that back. Still something I'm gonna look into, but I think it's not gonna make um, financial sense. Um, I did also look at um, increasing my inverter um, capacity. So that would require me to do some additional requests for the for DNR, etc. cetera. Um, it's something that's been bugging me for a while. I've got this nine kilowatt system and a six kilowatt inverter. So what would really uh, happen? Uh, and then when I worked it out, it's only gonna be like a hundred or is it a thousand kilowatt hours extra a year or something which is like 16 quid or something ridiculous so it just makes no sense for me to do that the system obviously works better if you have a smaller inverter than your array anyway in terms of optimization in the winter months etc so i've got rid of that out of my head um and the one thing that i'm still i still don't think it makes sense um uh, but i might do some experimentation in the future uh, batteries other than the tesla power so still going to keep that uh, but over the year, I had around um, one um, megawatt hours of electricity that was exported that I couldn't 
used. So I wasn't charging cars, I wasn't going to power, I wasn't hitting the water over that, that whole year. Um, so maybe there is an opportunity that I can better, you know, divert that electricity into a battery or, or, or something. Um, but again, as I mentioned in previous videos, battery storage is expensive uh, and it will take a long, long time to try and pay that back. So that's it. That's the end of this one year update. So I'm really happy um, with how the system is performing. I continue to do the monthly updates as long as they continue to be helpful. Um, but I'm really happy with how the system is performing. I'm happy that, you know, in nine years time, the system will have paid itself back at least nine years worst case, right? With the, the gas and electricity usage. Um, so yeah, solar in the UK does make sense. And uh, yeah, I think it's money well invested. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.